good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome. Welcome to my home um, on this cold winter morning. My name is Emma King. For those of you who don't know me, I am an ordinand at St. Stephen's and St. Mary's in Bath. Um, and I'm delighted to be able to speak with you this morning. So before we start, we're going to have a time of informal worship this morning. So um, I hope that you've got a nice cup of tea or um, a nice cup of coffee and um, maybe even a little bit of toast. But it would be lovely to worship with you in your home as you are in mine. So before we start, let's pray together. Loving God, we just thank you that we are able to spend this time together this morning. Open our hearts and our minds to the words that we are going to speak and that we are going to hear. Lord, I just ask that you be with each one of us in our homes today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, before we start, we are going to um, read our gospel reading this morning, which comes from Matthew chapter 3. Sorry, not chapter 3. Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 to 11. My apologies. So let's read our gospel reading. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John that you, what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go, into, go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the, the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare a way prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Wonderful words there in Matthew. Matthew's Gospel is um, probably my favourite of the Gospels. I enjoy them all, but I, I enjoy reading Matthew. I find his um, the way that he, he uses the imagery um, to be... It helps me to be able to learn, because I help, it helps me to be able to see what was happening at that time. So here we are the third Sunday of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting. Just recently, I had to do an assignment for college about the different seasons in the liturgical um, church year. Uh, and one of, the, one of the seasons that I needed to write about was about Advent. Um, and one of the things that I wrote about is about this time of preparation that we are in during Advent, during this period, and the, the preparing and waiting for what is to come. 
the reading of the Gospels and the reading of Isaiah and, and the Psalms it prepares us. It helps us to be able to prepare ourselves in this way, ready for the birth of Jesus. It's just such a special time, isn't it? And in our reading today, we read of John. We read of John sitting in prison. I like to think that he probably wasn't sitting, though. I imagine John the Baptist to be pacing, pacing around, probably quite impatient about being in prison. Just wandering around in the space that he would have had. He doesn't seem the type to me that would just be lounging around. So as he's there, he's waiting for the Messiah. He's preparing himself for the, Mess the Messiah who he knows is coming. And all of this is wonderful waiting, isn't it? But John... He hears about what is going on. He hears about all the different things that Jesus is doing. He hears about him giving sight to the blind. He hears about the lame walking. He hears about Jesus cleansing those with leprosy. And he hears that the deaf can hear now. He hears about Jesus raising the dead to life again and he hears about the Jesus proclaiming the good news to the poor but there's something about all of this that makes him question there's something that makes him question what is going on so he sends those words to Jesus he sends word well, he's in prison, he's one of the lucky ones that can get word out. And he sends the words to Jesus. Are you the one? Are you the Messiah? He's basically asking Jesus, are you the real deal, isn't he? Now, I for one, I'm really glad that Jesus asks these questions. Uh, sorry, that John asked this question. You know, quite often in our lives we question Jesus. We question about what it is that he's doing. Theological college is a little bit like that, let me tell you. It help, It puts you into the wilderness. It makes you question all different things. So picture a puzzle. You've been working really hard on this puzzle. You've been putting the pieces where you think that they need to go. Sometimes you'll get things wrong. You'll get it wrong. You'll put it in the wrong place. So you have to take it out. You have to start again. Sometimes you walk away from it and then you come back. A little while later, somebody might give you a little bit of encouragement and say, come on, you can do this, you can do this puzzle. So you go back to it. And then you're just about to finish your puzzle and you think you've just about got there and you're feeling really pleased with yourself and you're thinking, I've got this, I know what I'm doing here. And then somebody comes in and knocks it over. The pieces go everywhere, everything is scattered all over the floor, everything is jumbled upside down, turned around, everything is a complete and utter mess. And you just stand there. And you just look at everything that's going on around you. You don't know if you want to laugh or if you want to cry. Or maybe you might want to do both. You feel really rubbish. You question what has the last however long it's taken me to do this. What has it all been about? Was it worth it? 
Has it all been a waste of time? But then, something tells you to start again. Redo the outside, the edge pieces that helps prop up the puzzle. And you slowly start putting the pieces back in. But this time, when you're doing the puzzle, something feels a little bit different. Go back to that puzzle a little bit later on. I'm surprised though that John asks this question. Are you? If we look at chapter three in Matthew, if we look at chapter three, verse two, hang on, put my glasses on. John says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So we hear John saying those things. In chapter 10 of this, uh, uh, verse 10 of the same chapter, John says, the axe has been laid to the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. In chapter 12, in verse 12, he says, his winnowing fork in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. John knew that the Messiah was coming. John knew that. But he was expecting flames and excitement when the Messiah came. But Jesus doesn't do that, does he? Jesus doesn't do what we are expecting him to do, ever. He pours out his blessings on the poor. He tells his disciples to love their enemies and tells them not to judge people. Quite the opposite of what was going on in that time. Where was this warrior that was going to come in and, and sort everything out? John doesn't really understand what Jesus is, why Jesus is doing things the way that he is. And he was just there in prison, not being able to do anything. I once had to go and visit somebody in prison. I don't know if you've ever been to one, if you've ever had to go into one. It's not nice. They're not nice places. There is suspicion everywhere. One of the things that I remember was the person that I was visiting was full of doubt. Would life get back to normal? Did people still care about them? Were they a bad person? Life in prison can make you think things even if the answers were right there in front of you. Even if somebody was sitting in front of you telling you the, the answers. Our faith allows us to ask these questions. Theological college allows me to ask questions when everything that I thought I believed <coughs> or I thought I understood was scattered everywhere like a puzzle on the floor. When my severe dyslexia is stopping me from being able to write my essays and I feel really rubbish. I'm allowed to question. Jesus, what are you doing? John had questions. But 
ultimately Jesus's message was and still is his message to John was trust me have faith in me Jesus's message to me in those times is trust me have faith in me how many of us have questioned Jesus I cannot be the only person. How many of us have wondered what on earth it is that he's doing? How many of us have felt imprisoned by our doubts? In the psalm today, if you read the psalm for today, it says, the Lord sets the prisoners free and opens the eyes of the blind. As we wait in this time of preparation, in this Advent period, as we spend Advent preparing for what is to come in just a short amount of time, maybe we could ask ourselves these questions. What questions do I have? Are those questions imprisoning me? Do we need to open our eyes to what Jesus is telling us and trust him? And finally, are we willing to come out of the wilderness and redo the puzzle with Jesus passing us each of the pieces? Amen. going to have a short time of prayer now. So let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. This morning, Lord, we give you thanks for the example of your servant, John the Baptist, for his disciples who cared for him in jail, and for Jesus' message of reassurance to him. Help us to read and understand your word, and to find, their, find the messages that you have for us and give us the strength to act on your calling in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us as we prepare to celebrate the birth of your Son, to remember that he will come again in power and glory. Help us to find time in our busy lives for quiet prayer and reflection on the wonder of our Saviour's birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly God, we pray for strength in your church, both in this parish and for Christians throughout the world that we may be your messengers and be best images of your son that we can. We pray especially for the persecuted Christians around the world. Strengthen them as they find safe ways to declare your love for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all parents and their children in what can be a very stressful time of year. That they will find time to express their love for each other and to think about the true meaning of Christmas. We pray for families where there is pain and sadness in their relationships and those relationships may be healed and restored. 
Help us to remember that we are all God's children and are loved by him and to be thankful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, help us to rest in you, be, to be patient, to listen, to be forgiving and tolerant of others and to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. We pray for your healing and your, and your peace for all those we know who are ill, in body, mind or spirit. We pray that they may be aware of your healing presence with them today. And in a few moments of quiet, we bring before our Lord anyone you feel needs our prayers today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Stephen, St. Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning um, and um, I really hope that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe in this cold weather, try and keep warm if you can. Um, and we just, um, I pray a blessing upon all of you that you have a wonderful, wonderful day and a great week for you and your families and for all those that you love. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.